Brilliant. For the Metal Gods Meltdown. And today I am joined by... Hell Butcher from Sweden. I've just had a brief listen to your album. It's absolutely amazing. But yourself, you've been in the metal scene a long time now. Would you say that this Hell Butcher is the ultimate metal force? The Black Metal Force, yeah. I would say so, probably. It's a... Uh, uh, if you ask me, this is the kind of real black metal style. You know, a lot of people uh, have different opinions about what black metal should sound like. But according to me, this is the true black metal style. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it, mate. Because, I mean, black metal isn't my favorite genre of metal, to be honest. Um, I was looking at one of your interviews you did. I think it was for Metal Blade. I was just, yeah. like, posing questions to you. And you're sort of very similar to me, probably the same age as well. You like all sorts of metal. Uh, when I started listening to this, it was like, yeah, this is fucking fantastic. And it's like proper old school, but in your face. I mean, where did your lyrics come from and what inspired your writing for this masterpiece? Well, you know, I was more or less just... The lyrics, lyric wise, you know, it was just more of a continuation of what I've done with the uh, Niflheim previously. I've never even, you know, it's never crossed my mind to do anything else than just doing this, uh, you know, black metal lyrics in the vein of like Venom or old school metal. So, yeah, it's just, I'm just doing what I always done more or less. <laughs> Brilliant. Of course, all the tracks will be your babies, but which would you say is your favorite track on the album today and why? Personally, mine's Satan's Power. Yeah, it's hard to say really, but uh, I'm quite satisfied with the one called Death's Rider, actually. It's, uh, you know, a little bit different than the normal, uh, the normal stuff that I've done before. So... Um, and also, I'm quite satisfied with the vocals where I try to have a, a slight tune in the, you know, like screaming. So it's not purely screaming, but not not like many other, uh, I mean, other bands. They have a clean voice and then they have a growl voice or whatever you could say. I don't like that mix, you know, when it's like, like nah, 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 and then it's, it's, it's too much. For me. But a mixture is cool, you know. <laughs> yeah. So... I think that one is, yeah, it's short and uh, just like, yeah, a good song. But I like all of them, actually. <laughs> of course, and so do I, mate. Um, yeah. Of course, it doesn't get released until the 31st of May. How do you think it's going to be received by your fans? Well, uh, I have no idea, but I hope they will, uh, you know, enjoy it. It's, um, it, we have made a few gigs already, and, um, uh, it's been all good, you know. The audience have really, you know, like enjoyed the the songs. To start with, you know, when they have never heard the songs before, they don't know what to expect. So it's of course, uh, you know, uh, so hard for them to get into the songs and you know, like sing along and stuff like that. But uh, you know, towards the end of the show, they have all been like headbanging like hell. So I think they will like it. <laughs> Need and describe. Hell Butcher in five words. Total metal overdose of hell. Um, so can you give us a little bit of insight then into the album cover and how amazing it is to be signed with Metal Blade for your debut? Yeah. <laughs> Satan. Uh... <This> Satan. <laughs> She's gone. Well, yeah. uh, the, the record cover, I came up with ID for the cover Um. I bought like a like a um, executioner's mask thing, you know, that I edited a little bit to ha to use on stage because I thought it would, would be cool to have some, uh, you know, like appear like an actual hell butcher, you know, <laughs> on yeah, stage. Man. So I I I, I did that uh, that uh, executioner's mask, and then I thought like, well, I could use that because I couldn't come up with a good, you know, sleeve. I wanted something to, you know, like very direct and, uh, you know, nothing, you know, like symbolic, really. Just like straight on, you know, uh, 
cool cover. <laughs> so I came up with the idea that I could use the same, uh, some kind of same kind of figure as uh, for the album cover. And uh, yeah, so now it's like uh, you will you will have the kind of creature thing on the cover even live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so how and, uh, with Metal Blade, sorry. <laughs> yeah, with Metal Blade. I'm very, very pleased with Metal Blade. Uh, it's a, uh, I mean, I've always, previously I've always wanted to have like a, a proper record label that can make more things than just release the album. It's, um, uh, they, they really helped me with a, a lot more things than just, you know, they, they don't just make an album and sell it. It's more, you know, like promotion and stuff like that, which I really appreciate. And um, they seem, yeah, it's, it seems like a very good job they're doing, <laughs> if you ask me. So I'm really pleased with being signed to Metal Blade, absolutely. Brilliant. So what formats is the album going to be released on? Is it going to be vinyl, CD? Yeah, tech? vinyl vinyl and CD and uh, also on uh, some limited edition bo on both CD and vinyl. There will be a bonus DVD uh, with uh, footage from our first concert ever. Wow. Uh, so it's a full concert um, filmed with like That's three or four cameras. It was, to start with, it was really, I thought it would be a really cool thing, but uh, when we recorded it, uh, the, the, the sound was totally fucked up in some <laughs> weird way. So uh, we got a little bit less quality sound on the recording than I hoped for, but still the footage is there and you can get the idea of what we're gonna be about when we're playing live, you know. And so that's a cool thing. And uh, we, it's of course vinyl, you know, black vinyl and a few colored versions as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to, uh, I mean, distributors, they want their own color, you know, to compete with others and stuff. So it's, yeah, yeah you have to do it more or less. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it might be out in some other formats like cassette or something as well, but I don't think it's uh, set yet. So we will see. Brilliant. So then talking about playing live, what's your plans for the year tour and festival wise? Have you got anything lined up festivals? Yeah, well, I have a lot of gigs coming up just this two coming weeks uh, here in Scandinavia. It's in Finland first, and then we are, have two gigs in Sweden. Uh, all are prior to the release of the album. So um, after that, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, we have some, you know, like half booked stuff that's mm -hmm. not 100% confirmed, but definitely there are a lot coming. I have a tour booked for the autumn already in Sweden. A few, right. uh, four in you know, Stockholm, Gothenburg, Malmö and Linköping, I think it is. And um, so that one is already booked. And uh, yeah, occasionally we will probably have some, uh, you know, festival gigs this tour a uh, year. But, um, but uh, the thing is that the album is released in, 31st of May and which is a little bit too late to be yeah. on all the gigs this year so we're looking forward to <laughs> next year or you know like normal gigs in the autumn or whenever it starts well um are yeah. the plans to hopefully get to get over to the UK sorry are the plans to hopefully get over to the United Kingdom yeah I really hope so it would be great well. I'm uh, yeah yeah I'm I think that it's not impossible that we will show up quite soon. I don't know. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. So what can people expect from your band live then? Yeah. You know, the thing is that I'm trying to build up uh, everything a bit, you know, step it up from my previous band. So uh, I will, of course, now when we're just yeah you know starting off it's a, we don't have that much budget yet but no. uh, i've already i've already got myself pretty much stage props and stuff uh that we can use when we're not you know have where we don't have to fly to the gigs and stuff mm -hmm. so uh, it will be 
it will be massive. And I've also attended to a, you know, an education for pyro as a pyrotechnician, you know, right. so I can do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, it's of course it's, it's a hassle still, you know, with all the paperwork and mm-hmm. uh, such. But uh, that's my plans anyway to just like do it all, all the way, over the top, hundred <laughs> percent. Brilliant. Yeah. All right. So talking about playing live, what would you say is the weirdest venue you've ever played in your career? Oh, the weirdest place. Uh, what could that be? <laughs> there is a lot of strange places I've been playing at, actually. <laughs> but I, I can't, I can't remember really. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was in the. Yeah, it's, it's you know like it, sometime you know I I think it's weird but, uh, when I think of it. We were playing at some festival a few years ago, and all our equipment were lost in the airport. So we didn't have anything, and uh, we 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 and some of the you know people working at the festival were you know with the duct tape taping the logo on a black you know like. <laughs> some black plastic or whatever you know and built a backdrop and borrowed some spikes from some fans and stuff like that that, that, that was quite quite weird otherwise i think yeah uh, yeah well i played in uh in sweden you know when the when the, what the corona was going on it wasn't mm. as strict as it was in many other no. countries but uh so you could still, you know, like gather a few people if you were, if, if it was a private party, more or less. And uh, so I was in a barn playing some covers <laughs> when no one could go outside, more or less. We were all playing a gig there. It was <laughs> hilarious in many ways. <laughs> Is there film footage of that? That sounds quite interesting. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh. It's It was just like more of a private yeah. thing. So, yeah. yeah. All right, man. So if there was a made up black metal song about yourself, what would it be called? A <laughs> made up song about myself. Yeah. Uh, probably be called Hell Butcher. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> yeah, so sort of, not sort of... not the most funny, but what the fuck? <laughs> All right, man. Maybe. So, are you about to go into battle? Which album would you have playing? What album I am playing? No, yeah, what album would you have playing? You're about to go to war. Go to war. Uh, well, the new Hell Butcher album would fit perfectly, I think. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, if you were to be trapped in a room for a day, which famous person would you have with you, dead or alive? Uh, I I would always choose uh, like Steve Harris. He's the <laughs> he's my you know idol. So can you then tell us what was the last song you listened to today? Uh, today I haven't even listened to anything today actually. <laughs> but uh, last song I was listening to uh, must have been like yesterday or something. I think it was. Uh, uh, what the fuck was it? I can't <laughs> even remember. <laughs> uh, I think it was the the new Saxon album. You know the mm. Hellfire and Damnation. I like that how, song. It's a great good song. Is that album? It's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's really a, absolutely album. great. I think it really is. Yeah, really. and the yeah. last Judas Priest one as well. They're still yeah, yeah, also absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit. Uh, there, it's been a good year for metal this this year. Absolutely. Actually, I think absolutely. Yeah. And yours will be way up there as well, man. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. All right. So next thing, can you tell us how to check out Hell Butcher? Sorry, it was something yeah. uh, happening with the sound. Can you tell us why we should check out Hell Butcher? Why? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to do, you know, my own thing. So um, people that listen to black metal normally will probably get an album that doesn't sound like all the others and uh, you know people that listen more to heavy metal or thrash or whatever they can definitely enjoy it as well because it's like 
yeah, it's not a defined black metal album in that sense. If you ask average person, <laughs> yeah, I agree totally, mate. Yeah. I'm- I like my death metal, loving that mad on black metal. I like 1349, like Buffery. But I've like, always liked the thrasher, thrasher side or death. Metal. But yeah, I love your album. It's brutal. All right, man. So the next one is five questions. There's either or either. Yeah. So the first one is festival or small intimate gig? Yeah, hard one. I, I, I enjoy both, actually. But... Uh... Well, a small gig it could be good, you know. Depends on the band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you prefer meatballs or beer? Oh, <laughs> well, beer, beer. Vinyl or digital? Vinyl. I know the answer to this one. I think. Are you a saint or a sinner? <laughs> well, I must be a sinner, of course. Of course, of course. And yeah. the final one is Abba or Bathory. <laughs> well, Bathory, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I would have been disappointed if you said ABBA. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah again... you know, I don't even know anything about the uh, music except for metal, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I knew nothing about ABBA. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't you can't escape them if you're from Sweden, you know. So, but they are. I mean, they're okay, but it's not nothing that I listen to really. No, no, no. I have no. childhood trauma from it. My mum loved them, honestly. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I want to thank All you so right. much for your time. Do you have any final words for your fans, our viewers, and listeners? Get my new record and stay metal. <laughs>